Hey guys, this is Tonner, and today we're going to be talking about the Fall of Cadia campaign. Now, this is the campaign basically that you unlock second in the game, well, third almost, like it could be either of these, either Fall of Cadia or Indominus you'll open up next, and it is incredibly important. There's some really great loot from here that you'll need for characters, like for example, Yorick, uh, sorry, Yarick requires uh, certain pieces from in here, um, and overall it's pretty great like the rewards that you can get from in here so you're obviously wanting to progress as far as possible in these campaigns because certain pieces of gear are going to be locked behind it like if we have a look in here these uh, nasty spikes are locked in the fall of Cadia campaign at the very start there um some of the other stuff here is just later on in the campaign like here we've got uh, Indominus Mirror at Orcadia, uh, but you can see here Fall of Cadia campaign. So there's certain pieces of gear here that you're going to need, which means you're going to want a squad. Now, for the Fall of Cadia campaign, you can technically use any Chaos characters, which is your Black Legion and your Death Guard characters. However, there are three required characters, so we're not really going to cover those three spots, obviously. Those are going to be very important, but I will tell you how to kind of build those characters up. Uh, so the first one is Harkin. He is incredibly important to kind of sideline behind. Uh, he is obviously, uh, you can see here, he's got the jetpack on the back there. He's got a decent movement of four, one of the most mobile of the uh, Chaos characters, which you'll notice is an issue with the Chaos characters, is that they have quite a few very slow units. Uh, he's... Uh, he's um, actual like ability here that he uses helps you pierce through damage. It's not incredibly important for that part, but it is incredibly important for triggering those battle fatigues. So that way you can try and scare off uh, any enemies. Um, the guardsmen have really low thresholds from what I found for being able to get scared off. So using that, you're able to scare them off and then you're able to just completely um, wipe out. Like sometimes you can get like four guys at once if you manage to use this and manage to scare off enough guys. His passive here gives him extra hits every time he kills something and he adds additional damage every time um, he kills something. So each time you're going to be able to kind of ramp up his damage and ramp up his uh, ramp up his actual uh, hits as well. So that's great. So Harkin is very quite important. Uh, Archimatos is probably the most important character because he's going to be summoning up well out of the original three characters that you're locked into using. Um, he's going to be summoning up a whole lot of blood letters. With this, if you're able to use it properly, you're able to get at least two blood letters out uh sometimes you can get three it depends on how like high damage your blood letters are because you'll basically just keep summoning them every time he and every time he damages so these blood letters um as long as he doesn't kill off the enemy you're able to summon out a fair few but building him high means that you're going to be able to activate his passive more often which means you're going to be able to get more blood letters out as well because every time he kills a unit he's also going to turn them into a blood letter i mean it doesn't turn them into a blood letter. he kills them and then summons a blood letter in their spot um movement of three so it's like a standard movement essentially but being able to summon is incredibly important his summons are very important for dealing damage as well as tanking out some of the damage from your opponent so he's basically like the most important of these three original then obviously harkens probably second he's a great addition he deals a massive amount of damage this piercing um being able to hit four times at uh, base means that he's able to kind of knock off those Laz cannons in there. Now, the least important of the original three is probably Angrax. Unfortunately, he just doesn't really do much. He's so slow. Um, he's just like two speed means that he's very moving so slowly. Yes, you can teleport him in with his deep strike ability at the start, but even then you can't kind of get him close enough to be able to do much. He deals a decent amount of damage, but nothing insane. Um, he's just basically, he's, he's a decent damage dealer when you can get him there. But the fact that he's so slow and he just is takes struggles to be able to get there, uh, means that he just kind of falls by the wayside compared to these three original characters. His passive as well is not great. I don't think it's going to deal decent stuff. Like if someone moves adjacent to him, then he's going to deal damage to them. Um, 
if he comes into contact with its with its melee target this turn, so he deals additional damage then, but he's just so slow that it's hard to be able to do too much with him. So he's like the the last, the, the least important. You want him to kind of survive, obviously, um, so that way he's able to do stuff, um, but it's just not going to be amazing. Uh, so this passive here, if you didn't know, the Let the Galaxy Burn, all of these Black Legion guys have it as well. Um, Whenever they attack an enemy, there's a 50% chance that they do an additional hit or uh, is scored against that unit or a unit against adjacent to it if that unit is not chaos. So that's pretty decent. He's going to be able to do... These guys are going to be doing some decent damage from them. So as I said, the most important of these three originals, definitely Archimatos. Then I'd look at Harkin and then finally I'd look at Angrax. It's kind of like the... He's a slacker. He's the one kind of falling behind here. He's got decent health as well, like 406. He's got like a fair chunk above Archimatos, decent above Harkin, but he's just so slow that it's not really relevant. So as for the other characters... That's probably the most important one. So we're going to talk about Volk first because we're actually giving away Volk. Uh, if you guys go down below and comment, I want to hear which faction you want to see come into Tacticus next. So any faction, I know which one I want to see, as you can kind of see from my icon here, Thousand Suns. I absolutely love Thousand Suns. I want to see them next. But comment down below which faction you want to see, and that's going to be your entry into the game, uh, into the um, the drawing to be able to get Volk in game. And Volk, honestly, is the probably the most important character. I would say he's the most important character, even beyond Archimatos, like, if you could select one character to bring into Fall of Arcadia, Volk is going to be it. Because if you notice, within this campaign, there is a lot of these Laz Cannons. And each of them have Overwatch. And they are incredibly annoying. Um, they deal an insane amount of damage. They can wipe people out. And with Overwatch, it means that even if you try and move up to be able to take them out, then boom, you're going to be taken out. But Volk counters that. With this ability, he suppresses them. Which means that anyone within range of him is going to get suppressed and he's going to deal well he's going to deal six damage so he's going to hit up to six characters he's going to suppress them which means they have less movement and they can't overwatch he essentially removes that overwatch from them so on certain levels having him being able to do this is amazing because it means that he's then able to remove their overwatch now it's not going to be on every level because for a start he's got to start in the right spots so that way you're able to use it and everything um, he's got a range of three so within three he's going to be able to remove those but on certain levels he's going to be basically the deal breaker he's going to make it so that you're not kind of struggling from that now he is slow as well he's only two movement uh, you'll see here enemies hit by him become suppressed so he's able to suppress them even with his normal um, basic attack and here he's got an additional chance to block he is tanky because of this additional damage uh, additional chance to block he's also got decent health like it's not nothing to kind of write home about but it's still decent but this is kind of keeping in mind that i've got him at iron three uh angrax here is iron two Archimatos is iron one and Volk has a decent amount of health above above him. I've also got this to be able to chuck in there. Some extra health, some extra damage, extra health there. Sorry, extra armor, extra damage and extra uh, health there. So he's decently tanky, I find. Um, he's not kind of going splat immediately like some certain other characters do um, and he's honestly just the character that you want to bring in here so that's why I chose him for this giveaway because he's just so useful so yeah make sure you go down below and comment to enter so other characters beyond Volk obviously you've got Am uh, uh, Abaddon he's obviously very very good he's a legendary straight from the bat he doesn't have any additional passives here but uh, he buffs up the damage of all friendly chaos all friendly units with the let the galaxy burn which is all the um the additional um the black legion guys all have additional hits whenever it's triggered he's going to be decent alongside them he's damaging here he's dealing two lots of damage with his uh all his um uh, 
I, I keep going to call it an ultimate. His active ability, he's going to deal that piercing damage, then deal that power damage, and then he's going to heal himself up as well. So, honestly, he is going to be decent, but he's a legendary. It's going to be incredibly hard for you to be able to get. Let's talk about characters you can actually get. Corodius. Corodius here is honestly an incredibly helpful character because he's going to give all of your friendly chaos units one extra movement. So that means that your um, your Volk that's slowly wandering along, he's going to get it. Also, Volk is only one of the only ranged champions. <laughs> um, while like even this guy, he's got plasma listed here and he's using a plasma rifle, but he needs to be in melee to be able to use it. So additional movement incredibly incredibly important because it's going to make it so that you're actually going to be able to get angrax in you're going to be able to get vulcan in, in closer to them you're going to be able to also uh deal damage to enemy psychers not super important from where i i have seen so far like i haven't really seen any psychers um so far but the other thing the additional movement the the most important thing here he's also going to be able to summon some pox walkers uh going to be able to summon up a few of them and those guys are going to deal damage and be able to kind of tank and stuff he's got the contagions of nurgle you'll notice all of these guys have this contagions of nurgle which is like their, their passive ability here and he's going to make it so that they have a reduction in armor to all non-chaos units Reducing the armor is obviously going to be helpful because it's dealing additional damage as well. So, out of like the main kind of, if I'm choosing, if I could choose anyone, I'm not choosing legendaries here, out of the Black Legion, I would probably choose these four plus Corodius. Uh, the other option instead of Corodius is probably going to be Norse's rock brain because he's one of the only healers well he's o the only healer that you're able to get for chaos so if you have rock bane he's going to be incredibly important here because he's going to be able to heal up he's got the healer stuff here can heal him with just his normal uh like his other active ability there he's got the resilience so he's taking less damage there um so anytime that he takes lethal damage instead he's going to basically stop at one health so then he's going to be able to heal himself up but here, anytime an adjacent friendly Chaos unit takes lethal damage, he's then going to resurrect them. He's got a 75% chance to resurrect them here with the base, as long as they're not overkilled. So, Norse's Rotbane is going to make it so that you're able to three-star stuff basically being able to three star stuff or be able to pull it out in case you kind of get to the point that you're kind of losing everyone as for the other characters typhus obviously legendary going to be incredibly helpful but he's a legendary so i'm not going to really cover him he's going to deal damage to anyone that's adjacent to him uh well one person that's adjacent to him there and then he's going to deal psychic damage out any adjacent targets are going to take psychic damage any further adjacent is going to he's going to basically do a massive psychic wave there um he's also got the psycho obviously um and then we've got Maladus. not important <laughs> i don't think Maladus important at all his melee he's slow he's dealing damage here um which is going to be good but i don't know <laughs> i i don't think it's worth it he's just he's slow compared to angrax who you're forced to take who's slow and um and Volk, who is amazing outside of that. I don't think Maladus is worth it at all. And then you've got Pestilent here. Pestilent's slow again. Um, he's going to be not as bad like because he's going to be able to buff up their ranged attacks, buff up their melee attacks. But I don't know. This unit explodes when he dies and deals the damage to everyone. No damage to Death Guard. Maybe if you bring all Death Guard. But it's not possible for you to bring all Death Guard. So... Basically, who we're looking at here. We're looking at the three basic ones that you've got there. You've got Volk. I would bring Volk if you've got him. And then finally, I would bring Crodius if you've got him. Or you can replace Crodius with Northless Rotbane. Either of those two is going to work really well. Crodius to be able to get in there faster. Rotbane to be able to make sure that you're healing up and staying alive for a bit. 
It probably helps if I let you guys know when I'm going to be closing the giveaway. I'm looking at the 29th of September, so exactly a week from this, I'm going to be closing the giveaway. And as I said, if you guys want to enter, head on down to the comments, leave a comment as to what character, well, what faction you'd like to see come into Tacticus next. But that's it for today, guys. Have a great day and goodbye.